The curve node can be used for image processing, for adjusting tonal values, as well as creating profile shapes for height maps. So to create the curve node, I'll just hit the space bar, and you can find it here in this list of operational nodes. You can also use the toolbar menu here at the top and hit this button here to create the curve node as well. Now the curve node is going to take an input, and we can use color or grayscale. In this case, I'm going to input a grayscale. So here I'll hit the space bar, and I'm just going to do a search for gradient linear one, and we'll use this as our input. So I'll double click so we can view the parameters and the result here in the 2D view. Now this curve editor is going to function pretty much the same as any other curve editor. So if I want to create a few points, all I have to do is just simply double click and I create a point. I can left click and drag to move the points values around. I can also use the controls, uh, the sliders here on the left and the bottom to set the value. So here we can set the value this way or here on the bottom as well. If I want to set this uh, more precisely, I can double click this numeric entry field and actually type in a value as you can see here. So you'll also notice that with this point, I have these tangent handles and I can adjust my tangents. If I want to break a tangent, I can use the alt and left mouse button to break the tangent. Now at the top of the curve editor, we've got some controls for working with our tangents. So here I'll just select the point and I'll just reset. I can also get rid of both tangents or square this point here by using this button. So now I get more of a, a linear interpolation as I'm showing here. So let's create one more point and do the same thing here. Let's just make this uh, a linear. And so now I've got these three points. I can edit all the points at the same time by doing a left click and drag to select all the points. And now I can edit them together. I also have some distribution and alignment options as well. So here, if I right click, you can see that I can choose to, let's say, align to top. And now I align uh, all of these points to the topmost point. Uh, here, if I want to work with some distribution, uh, what I'm going to do is just take this middle point. Let's move it all the way over. Now, let's select all of our points. Let's right click and choose distribute horizontally. And now you can see that the uh, spacing between the points are now uniform. So here, I'll just select all the points again and then just reset. We also have some fit to view options. So for example, let's say that I'm working with a, a point. And uh, let's say that I get this tangent handle uh, just extends beyond what the graph view is here. So uh, in this case, I can just come over here and choose to fit this curve to view. And now I can see everything. So here is that tangent handle again. Another thing uh, that I'd like to point out is that we can actually set these points to have a higher than one or lower than zero value. So here you can see this dotted line and this represents uh, zero. Let's select this point and let's come up here to our numeric entry and set this to a value of say like two. Now you can see this point is way out of view. I'll hit the uh, fit to view button and now you can see here is the point. Also, we have this new dashed line that's going to represent the one value. And you can see that this point uh, rests you know, well above uh, a value of one. So I'm just going to drag this guy back down and then just fit everybody to view here. If I need to clear all of my points, I can just hit this clear button. Of course, we can also work with color information. So uh, here I'll just grab a material and uh, let's create another curve node. And let's just take the base color and use that as input. So here on my curve, you can see that I'm working with RGB and I can choose to work with uh, a curve in a specific channel, like for instance, red. And then I can come in and start to make, you know, uh, adjustment to this red channel to process the image. All right. So uh, now what I'd like to do is just run through an example of creating a shape profile for our height. So to do that, I'm going to quickly change my geometry. Uh, so let's set this here to be the plain high res. And so here's our curve. Uh, let's uh, create a point. So here I'll just double click to create a point. I'm going to set this to a value of one. Let's grab this point and set its value to zero. So we get uh, kind of like this bell curve here. So we have this. This has become our shape profile. And then here is the, the height that's being produced uh, from this profile. So what I'd like to do is view this on the height channel. So let's right click and drag and drop this uh, node here or the output of this curve node into the height channel of my shader. And then I'm going to come over here to my material and choose edit. And I'm going to adjust my scale to something like say two. And so here in my 3D view, you can see the result of that bell curved height. Now, I'd also like to point out that on this particular shader, I'm using the tessellation option just so I can more clearly visualize this height shape. 
All right, so uh, what we're doing here is we're taking an input and then we're gonna process that here with our curve to create our profile. So let's come back over here to our gradient and I'm gonna tile this by, let's say four. So now I'm getting this tile uh, and this is again my shape. So it's a little hard to kind of see what I'm doing here because you know we don't have any real time shadowing here. So what I like to do as a trick is just use uh, ambient occlusion uh, to kind of fill in the shading for me. And I'm just gonna use the output of this curve node here to uh, provide that AO. So again, I'll just right click, drag and drop that into my 3D view and choose the ambient occlusion input. So here is the result that I get now and this gives me a much better uh, result. So the next thing I'd like to do is just come back over to this gradient and I'm gonna switch this, uh, I'm just gonna switch its angle here. All right, so let's go back over to our curve and uh, then kind of go into you know the fun process of adding some points and, and making some changes here. All right, so uh, I'm gonna grab this guy. I'm going to uh, create another point and uh, I'm just going to attempt to kind of create a, a cool profile shape here. So this is the height that I was able to produce uh, by uh, processing the values here of my input using the curve node. And again, this becomes like this kind of 2D uh, you know, slice profile shape uh, that I'm using to kind of create this result. Uh, one other thing that I kind of forgot to mention was uh, that we can actually constrain the movement of these points. So for example, let's say that you know I want to take this point and I want to move it uh, horizontally, but I don't want to adjust the value on the Y. So what I can do is uh, start to left click and drag and then hold down shift to constrain that here to just the X axis, as you can see. Uh, so here I'll grab this node, do the same thing. Let's just constrain it, get something more like this. Uh, making a change here and here on this node again if I want to do the same thing except constrain it to the y-axis I can left click and drag maybe start to uh, drag up upwards hold down the shift and now I can constrain that so now this becomes my new profile shape that I've created uh, very quickly here with just using the curve node